Those are some of the sights, and more importantly for this segment, the sounds of the hit TV show Grimm, filmed, of course, right here in Portland. This is also the final season of Grimm. As most of us know, we're enjoying these final few episodes. It will be sad to see the show go, especially because of all that local flavor we've enjoyed during its run here on NBC. Cassidy Quinn is standing by for us this morning. Cassidy, the sound designer behind the show, has actually done all of his work from a home studio right here in Portland, and I think you're going to take us behind the scenes this morning. We are getting such a cool behind the scenes look right now. I'm kind of overwhelmed with all the cool things that happen in this small little studio. Yes, right here in Portland, we have the sound designer Jason Edwards, Edwards with Grimm. You worked on Grimm 123 episodes since the pilot episode and you just finished working on the final episode, right? That is correct. Yeah, started on the pilot, worked on our 123 episodes. Now, when people yeah. think sound design for a huge network mm -hmm. popular TV show, you think, oh, if things are made in some fancy studio, probably in mm -hmm. Hollywood. You're saying my it studio is not fancy? Oh, it's very, it actually <laughs> is very <laughs> fancy. But you think, like, there's so many people involved in this, and you are just doing all this awesome work yourself. Well, I am. That is <laughs> correct. But there are still lots of people involved with this. As a sound designer, I'm handling... Uh, one portion of the sound aspect for the show. There's sound editors, there's Foley artists, there's dialogue editors, and so I'm part of a larger team that makes this happen. Yeah. And a majority of these sounds that you create for the show didn't exist before. You actually have to find them somewhere in the world, right? Correct, yeah. I mean, a lot of the, um, depending on the characters, but certainly a lot of them required uh, special recording situations to get those unique sound effects to create those characters. And then a lot of things were based off of creatures. So if you had like the Hoonjager, which is based on a dog, I was pulling Rottweiler and Doberman Pinscher sounds to create the kind of sonic characteristic of that particular creature. Yeah. Wow, turning animals into even much more creepy things. Yeah. <laughs> Creepier Wesson. Wesson, Wesson, yes. yeah. So many Vezin, and there are over 100 characters, right, that you created sounds for? There was, yeah, I think uh, almost 100 unique creatures on top of like some non-creature elements like Vulcanalis and the Gollum and uh, uh, I believe another creature too that were not like animal based. Wow. Yeah. Now you have part of it up on your screen. This is mm -hmm. for that Gollum character, right, Correct. that you mentioned? Mm -hmm. So this creates a sound for one character and only one part of that character's appearance, but there's tons of things on the screen. Correct, for this, for this part of the show, uh, all of these different tracks, all of these audio files are kind of like the basic recipe that makes up what that creature sounds like. So you have the sound of bubbles, you have the sound of uh, uh, thick mud and water splashing. Um, we used, uh, uh, I'll play a couple of these, like here's an accordion breath for oh the creature coming up <laughs> through the mud, and then we have some bubbles. Whoa. And some of this involved you actually getting out in the mud yourself. <laughs> Correct, yeah. Uh, so much of this was really specific to the character that I actually filled the back of my truck up with dirt and water and uh, jumped in with a wetsuit on and recorded tons of mud sounds, uh, like. <laughs> Can you play us what they sound like together yeah, here? Yeah, absolutely. Here's what this all sounds like together. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. So creepy. That's pretty cool. Thank you so much, Jason. Congratulations on your whole run of the show. We're